Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back. Today I'm here with my second makeup tutorial using the Jaclyn Hill Vault Collection. Today I have the Dark Magic Palette, which is this gorgeous, rich, green, blue, teal deal. Uh, this is the look that I came up with today and I love how it turned out. So I hope you guys love it too. Make sure you're subscribed and that your bell is selected so that you're notified when I upload my other tutorials using this whole collection. Um, I still have two more palettes to use and I will also link the rest of the videos up here once they're created and make like a little playlist and you can check it out right up there. Uh, but yeah, let's just go ahead and get started. All right, let's get started. My eyes are prepped and primed. I swapped out my lip. I just actually did my first tutorial on this look, took it off, and now we're doing the second one. So I'm going to be using the Dark Magic palette. It looks just like this. This is actually the first one that stood out to me, even over the purple ones. I wanted to use the Bling Boss palette first, just because that one purple shade was like me. But this palette stood out to me the most, just because it's so different. It reminded me a lot of the Anastasia Subculture palette, and I actually really loved that palette. So I'm excited to create today's look. So, so the first color I'm going to go into is Potion. It's this like mossy olive green right here and with a Smith 232 I'm gonna bring this into my crease really tapping off the excess bring it here into the crease and I'm making it very pigmented from the outer crease all the way to the inner crease so all of this should be the same darkness and then I'm lightly feathering it up to get a nice blend. I'm also going to bring that underneath so I'm going to look up into my mirror and carry this down on the bottom lash line. I'm just using that same big brush, feathering it around. Even though this is still somewhat of a darker shade, I'm using it in a very light way so it's going to be our transition shade. Kind of wrap it around. Okay, with that same brush, I'm going to use the color Poof, which is the lightest shade. This looks like it's going to match my skin tone pretty darn closely, so I'm going to use that to help blend out the potion shade. Oh yeah, this is perfect. That is something that I thought was missing from her original palette, was like a matte beige. Also to set your eye, also as like a matte highlight shade. This is exactly what her last palette needed. You can see that helped just diffuse that color, and you can use this for any color to diffuse it. So next I'm going to switch to the 230 from Smith. As you can see it is a little bit smaller than the 232 that I was just using. It's just more dense so it's going to apply more color. So I'm going to go into Shh which is pretty cool toned brown. To me on the palette that seems like it would be lighter but when I was swatching them and kind of like coming up with color combinations it actually deepens up the potion shade. That's what I'm going to use it for today. I'm going to pop this right here in the outer corner and just start deepening this up. And then I'm slowly going to drag this into the crease over here and start deepening up the crease as well because I, I know I really want to do a cut crease. You want this to also be super dark over here. So I just slowly add more color little by little. I don't go crazy with a lot of pigment right away. I'm just adding a little bit, tapping off the excess, applying it on the eye, and then repeating. I'm going to go into my favorite pencil brush ever. This is the A14 pencil brush from Anastasia. Do I have? I've got I have swatches I just realized like stuck on my hand. Anyways, this is the A14 brush from Anastasia. It's a really soft pencil brush and it works great. So I'm going to take Busted, which is this beautiful, beautiful blue, and I'm going to start defining this crease with the pencil brush and the shades. I'm really going to tap off the excess. The darker the colors you go into, the more careful you want to be about tapping off the excess because if you go straight away with that color onto your eyeball without tapping off the excess. A lot of it can fall out on the face. So I have already powdered under here just in case that happens, but just keep that in mind with any shadow. Just the darker you go, the more you're going to want to tap off the excess before putting it on your eyeball. So I'm going to start wiggling this very slowly here, slowly patting. switch to a clean fluffy brush. This is the 247 from Smith. I'm going to compare it to the 230 that I was using before. 
I show these two next to each other all the time because they're very similar in size. It's just the 242 is more tapered, so it has a flat side where this one stays really fluffy. I hope you can see that there. So I'm gonna take the 247 because now I'm gonna pop it into that potion shade again. And because it's more tapered like this, I can get in there and blend out right at that edge without bringing the color around too far. When you have a fluffier brush, it's going to bring the color around in a more broad area. So by doing this, it's keeping it very, very focused and precise while still blending at the same time. I hope that was explained well. So I'm gonna go into the 230 now that I've already done that and go a little bit higher up to blend it up a little further and a little bit more broad. So I wanna make this even darker. I really want this super vampy and like super cut. So I'm going to take the number three brush from Anastasia. It looks like it would be like a lip brush. I don't exactly know what its main purpose is for, but it's a very, very precise brush that I'm going to use the very tip of it to create a very cut crease deal. And I'm going to be using the inside job shade, which is this darker shade here. And just start kind of creating this line. When you want to be really precise with something, a lot of times what I like to do is use my pinky as a balance point on another part of my face. So right now I'm pushing it here very lightly because if I push too hard, it's going to like take my makeup off. So I'm holding it very lightly here and then precisely drawing this line. And then I'm going to take this and start packing it here on this outer lid area and using the pencil brush to very lightly blend that out a little bit. Not really blend, just diffuse the color. So you don't want to move that around too much. And then going back into busted and putting that right next to it. Before I focus on that anymore, I think I'm going to go in with some concealer and cut this inner lid area because this outer part is probably going to get a little messed up when I do that because I'm going to have to blend it and stuff. So whatever I'm doing right now on the outer lid is going to have to be redone. So with that being said, uh, I am going to take this Anastasia number 18 brush. It's a really flat concealer brush and I'm going to take my concealer. I'm going to be using the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer in the shade Light. And start stamping it where you need it. I'm keeping the most concealer right at the crease and then as it gets closer to over here it's gonna fade. So all of your pressure should be right here. So I'm quickly just gonna use my finger and lightly eh, eh, never mind. Before this dries I want to set it with a powder so what I'm gonna do is use this is a MAC 239 brush and I'm going to use that poof shade and I'm going to set this entire lid so now what I'm going to do is use that 247 brush and grab some more of that potion and tap off a bunch of it and kind of tap here in between this poof and busted shade and just try to mend them together just like so I'm just doing like side to side swipey motions okay so got a little bit of fallout I'm going to grab some powder really load it up and just so now I'm going to grab my Sigma E15 flat definer brush. This is my favorite brush for really defining that lower lash line. I'm going to grab Busted, uh, that bluer shade, and bring this right there at the lashes. Just really, really, really define that. I'm going to try to not bring the inside job shade down just because I feel like I want the blue to pop a little bit more. Okay, and now I'm gonna grab the potion shade, which was the olivey green on the same brush and go like right at the edge of that. Place it 
it underneath. So this doesn't really have a shimmering color that I'd want to use as a highlight. So what I'm going to do is just use the highlight that I used on my face to highlight my eyes today. So that would be the Ofra Rodeo Drive Highlighter. So I'm going to use this right here on the inner corner of my eyeballs. I'm also going to bring that right here at the tippy top of my brow bone. In my waterline, I'm going to be using the Rimmel Nude Scandalized Liner. This is my favorite nude liner for the waterline, so I'm going to pop that in there now. That's really, really, really going to open the eyes even more. Even though this eye look is made for opening up your eyes pretty much, it's going to open it up even more. So now I'm just finishing off the look with some mascara and false lashes. Do you guys hear my dad sneezing and blaring his TV? I'm keeping this in the video so he can hear it. I'm not crazy every time I ask him to turn it down. All right, so this is the final look. I'm gonna show you some very close up shots so you can see a really good idea of what this look looks like up close. I really love how this turned out. I feel like this is just kind of mermaid-like. I don't, it just, I don't know, it just makes me think of a mermaid. And I really, really love this. I think this is one of those summer or fall type looks. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out when I upload my next tutorial using the Jaclyn Hill Vault Collection. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later. Bye!